Welcome in everybody to Fantasy Pros MLB. This is Leading Off Live brought to you by Bet365. It's me, Joey P, back from WrestleMania and of course the Welsh. Shout out to Scott Bogman who filled in for me yesterday so I could still hit the breakfast buffet and sleep in after two very long nights of incredible sports entertainment and pro wrestling. Uh, it was a, a glorious two evenings, especially night two. Cody Rhodes, the American Nightmare, gets his championship. I'm very excited. Welsh waving the flag, very excited. And uh, it was just great. Got to go with my daughters and my cousin. We had a great time. And thank you for holding down the fort for me yesterday, Welsh. And apparently everybody needs Tommy John. So I just want to check on you. How's the elbow today? Because I know you're yeah. in the show. And I've seen some of your angles when you work your mouse. And I got to say, they're a little suspect. It's a little sore. Not going to not gonna lie. Going to have to stretch it out. Been putting a lot of max effort on the clicks. You know, that's how we go. We go fast clicks over here as fast as possible. We want to make sure that we are uh, utilizing every element of it. And I don't know. There might be some UCL damage. So we're going to go get it checked out after the show. All right. We'll get you an MRI. We'll get that all set up for you. Make sure that whether you're getting MRIs today or not, make sure you're doing so over at Bet365 and place your bets there too. Get an MRI, place a bet, lots of versatility. But no, whatever you do, leave that promo code leading off when you do. Bet five bucks, get 150 in bonus bets every time you do. Or first bet safety net, $1,000 in bonus bets. But again, promo code leading off. And of course, we're giving away free stuff today. We have the winner of the Trophy Smack Trophy. Ooh, We've got a new giveaway. Lots of fun things. But let's start at the top. It's great to see my peanuts and Cracker Jacks again. I missed you all. Love you. And a shout out to the guy who in the top of the chat too, who sat Nimmo this week. So good on you. Well uh, done with that four for four. Let's start with some fun. My boy, Ellie De La Cruz, homer twice, won it inside the Parker. Three for four, four runs scored, a stolen base, a fun day for Ellie De La Cruz. The fun to watch factor for Ellie De La Cruz is off the charts, Welsh. We know this. We know we have to take the good with the bad. Sometimes the bad's going to be those strikeouts and the swing and miss, and that's just part of the show. But when the show turns like this, like it did yesterday, ooh, baby, Ellie De La Cruz is a special, special talent. What'd you think of the Ellie performance from yesterday? Because I know the fantasy managers out there certainly loved it. This is exactly what Ellie is built around. He's built around these explosive games, these explosive weeks, and it's all going to be about consistency. But this, I think, is rubber meets the road at the end of the day with Ellie. Ellie right here, by the way, uh, pictured in my uh, background. This is what you've got to figure out. If you're an Ellie owner, I'm going to mostly assume that you know what ride you're in for. You know that you're in for probably lots of strikeouts, bad batting average, bad swings, but you're going to just, at the end of the day, you're going to have a guy that's probably going to steal 55 to 60 bases this year. It's probably going to hit 20 homers, but might hit 230 and have big swings. The reason I'm saying this though, is people see this experience and they're like, oh, I mean, look at the chat in all this Ellie loving, all the Ellie experience. The yeah. Ellie, Ellie, Ellie. But everybody also is talking about how ridiculously bad Ellie's uh, swing and miss game still is, which it still is talking about the expected batting average, which is not even 220. It's 216. He has a 41% K percentage. His walk percentage is down. His hard hit percentage is down. So I say all this to say, just understand what version of Ellie exists. And if you can stomach the swings, he's great to have. But this is also the opportunity if you've wanted out of that business to get out off of these big, massive swings because the bad stuff is still there. The strikeouts are there. The batting average is not there, but he is still the fastest player in baseball. Two homers, six stolen bases so far, and he has doubled his barrel percentage. I, I just make sure people have that perspective of Ellie because I really don't think this tells us anything that we should like be like, hey, should we buy an Ellie? Should we sell it? No, it's just like, you should know exactly what you're getting into. He's fun. Sure. He is the most fun fantasy player out there. And yesterday was a prime example of him flying around inside mm -hmm. the park homers, big monster crush bombs. This is Ellie. Trent has an interesting point of view. Ellie's fun, not a great fantasy player, but a lot of fun nonetheless. I don't know. I think he's I just a great agree fantasy about player. The, I think he's a great fantasy player. I think that he's just sometimes not a great fantasy player. And that's just part of the ride with Ellie. And he's so young. He's also a, a, you know, he's also a taller player too. Sometimes, you know, a little bit, you know, it takes some guys a little longer who are the bigger side to learn the strikes on the major league level. It's a little bit different up there. I feel like 
<laughs> so I would just be patient with this trend. Uh, by the way, your hair is so high today. It's barely in the frame. Like when you get very excited. Yeah, I get up there and hair is just out of the frame. Uh, it's like cropped out. Yeah, you know, like at the uh, getting yeah. back to Ellie and not my hair. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I think there are improvements that are happening. If that's the other thing that people are wondering, like, hey, you know, is, is this changing? I think some things are changing. I, he's barreling the ball even more. He's really crushing fastballs so far this year. He's hitting breaking pitches a little bit better. So those are like the good signs. And I think Ellie is an awesome head to head player. I think he's a pretty good roto player. And what he does big in Roto is going to be great, but you got to make up for him. You probably need to have like Luis Arise and Jung Hoo Lee and stuff like that to make up. But at least a great fantasy player. I think and he's a better I, Roto player, to be honest with you. Like the batting average is going to hurt sometimes, but it's more of these strikeouts where like in the points leagues for me. Yeah, points leagues he's stinky. He, he, he is, uh, it's a different conversation. I don't want to say stinky. I think that's too far, but. Kind of stinky. Different. <laughs> Fine, you can keep saying stinky. Let's talk about Blake Snell. Lasted three innings, allowed three runs against the Giants. So uh, this is exactly what we thought. Uh, the velo was in the same range, but again, he looked like a guy who I would say, from the highlights I saw yesterday, working his way back. So encouraging that he was out there in the month of April. <laughs> That's good. It's only the ninth. I assume the Blake Snell that we're used to seeing, we'll see somewhere towards the end of the month. Do you think that's being a little bit too, you know, bearish or you think that's actually maybe sooner? No, I think that's about right. I mean, um, th this was one of the bets yesterday. If you guys listened to the show, it was the under six and a half. They dropped six and a half on us like right away. And this had to do with workload of like what they would let Blake Snell do in the first game versus one of the lowest walk teams in baseball in Washington. And it worked out, it worked out well, but I'd say this, 72 pitches. This is a team that doesn't like strike out a ton and they walk more in Washington. He had a 44% swing and whiff rate on 72 pitches. He had double digit whiffs on every single pitch he threw. So the guy, the stuff is still there. There weren't, the slider was like a little bit less, but everything was still about on target. 50% whiff rate on the fastball. The changeup, which has been so good, 50% whiff rate. He threw that around 18% of the time. I think it's just getting into a groove, allowing him to go, 95 100 uh innings or pitches so he can get into like the fifth inning that's about what blake snell's about i thought it was great i thought it was fine that's what i expected that's why i went on an under against him in the first game i think he'll get right pretty quick and we'll still see the snell that's like two or three walks a game and like eight to nine strikeouts a game that's who he's going to be all year long that's a great question from tim sawyer who do you C as the better long-term option in fantasy gunner or ellie see i think gunner is probably the safer high floor guy but ellie has that best in baseball potential like that's the thing about ellie and i don't think gunner has that i think gunner's a very good player so gunner to me is like the safer long-term fantasy investment but it's only one guy that has a chance to be like cream of the crop top three pick and i don't think it's gunner that's that's me personally as good as gunner is ellie has that possibility as he gets older and matures as a player i don't know what your take is that's mine i'd like both of them but that's kind of a cop out crappy answer. Anyway. Is that like, are you talking like dynasty? He just has a better long term option. I mean, better long term option, like Gunner is the safer high floor guy. Yeah. That I don't think, like, investment wise, I don't think you're ever going to be upset about. Whereas <clears throat> there is potential to be upset about Elliot La Cruz. Maybe he doesn't make the advancements we hope over time. Maybe he is always going to be this guy who is, you know, brilliant some weeks and other weeks struggle bus. I don't know. Maybe yeah. It's only April, but I, I mean, I always want the upside guy. I, I agree. The upside is Ellie, but uh, in my dynasty ranks, I had Ellie really, really high. I moved him down um, under Gunner, and really, it's it's just about like it doesn't look. Even though he is barreling the ball better, forty plus percent K percentage is is really bad. And like, how long is this going to maintain? Is this going to hold? I'm a little bit, I'm just worried the swing and miss. Plus, this team is making no commitment to hitting him high in the order. It doesn't matter if he just hit two homers. I don't know. Like these, these games are awesome. This is what's so tough about Ellie the game. We just had, that's the game where we sit here and we talk and we're like, by the way, Ellie could be the best player in baseball. But then we forget, you know, the previous like five games where he's striking out 50% of the time and he's hitting six or seven in the order. So mm -hmm. I think Gunner is the safer bet long-term big hard hit numbers. He does steal. He's going to hit 30 homers MVP like player. I just think if Ellie hits over 250 one year, he's going to be like the best player in baseball. I just don't know if that's ever going to happen. And he's not really showing the signs yet. But I do still think he can lead baseball in stolen bases. And I think he can lead in just wow moments overall in baseball. Well, he's a 40-40 potential player. Sure. And I don't think that's hyperbole. Like that's, 
and again, they emphasize, you know, potential with a capital P here. Uh, but it's a great question that Tim asked. I like the good questions. Peanuts and Cracker Jacks bringing good questions today. Otani, three for five with a solo homer yesterday. Also, Bailey Ober, nice bounce back. Seven Ks, one run, five, so everybody can calm down. Yep. Uh, Taylor two Zachs, Zach Gallon didn't get the uh, decision, but three runs in five innings, struck out 10 Rockies, but again, it's the Rockies. So if this is your, I want out of Zach Gallon moment, this is your opportunity. God, just I think I do. the Rockies. Well, look, trolling the Rockies. Zach Eflin, on the other hand, surrendered five runs. So now we're back to the other version. So very Jekyll and Hyde season for Zach Eflin. Uh, again, it was lost to the Angels, too. The Angels, not exactly the greatest lineup. I saw a stat that Mike Trout has his last 10 homers. He has 10 RBIs off of. God, that's depressing. Yeah, I think I he's got five homers on the year with five RBI. Yeah, you go back to last year, it was the same thing. So it's kind of codified baseball. Knocking it out of the Both of these guys. Like, I want to say are frustrating. Gallon screwed my under four and a half first five for that. I'm sorry, not Gallon. Eflin. Uh, Eflin giving up. He had uh, two outs in the fourth and then gave up a stupid bloopy hit, pitching to a lot of contact. And Gallon is, I'm legit. I, I think I'm like, <laughs> I, I kind of want to move on. Like I've been kind of defensive about Gallon. It's just three straight starts. The stuff doesn't look, I don't care that he had the 15 strikeouts. I tweeted this through the first three innings. He threw 24 curveballs. He just decided, I'm throwing curveballs this game. In the second inning, he threw 11 of them. So check this out. His fastball stunk. It was down again over a mile per hour year on average. Had a 9% whiff rate, but he had a 52% whiff rate on his curveball because he just decided, I'm now going to throw this 40% of the time. It was a weird start. Guys started to catch up a little bit later. I, I think I think Gallon is reeling. I, I'm I'm very frustrated through three starts, and uh, if I could get even value, I just don't know if I want to be in that business. He could write it, and this was the start of maybe him writing it with this weird curveball thing. But I don't know, man. As someone that watches him every single start, he just doesn't look right, and you don't feel like you can get a six inning no uh, no run game out of him right now. He's given up three a game, easy. Uh, Spencer Turnbull, six shutout innings Monday. Uh, good start for him. 13 to 1 K walk rate so far ratio there. Luis Castillo, that's the one we got to talk about. Now, a lot of people have already talked about this in the chat. Nine hits, four runs, five innings, loss to the Blue Jays. So the last time we talked about Castillo said, I'm not really worried because the strikeouts were there, all this stuff. I'm not panicking yet, but I am at worried. Welsh, where are you when it comes to Castillo here? Yeah, I mean, the whiffs are, they're just not there. A 22% whiff rate. He had 11 on the game. Barrios was a lot more effective. Everything was down again. It was down like a mile per hour on the fastball. He has not righted so far this year. I don't know. I, I Maybe I want to see him throw more secondaries. He was 40% fastball in this. I kind of, uh, I don't know if you can blame it, but like Kirby's kind of been down. Castillo's kind of been down. I wonder if there's something in who had an injury, like what's going on with the Seattle pitchers. Like something's could it be the catching too? I don't know. Could like Kyle Rowley be? I, I don't know where it is right now. It'd be very interesting. Like Rowley to watch wasn't Kirby there right last now. year. I mean, I look, there that's a great point. <clears throat> you saw, you know, even last year, like St. Louis, right? That that downgrade from Yadier Molina to anyone else affected that pitching staff, but there's not a big change there. I'm so, less worried about Castillo than I am Gallon right now. I, I really okay. Am. That's, that's how if, if we can break that I guarantee down you, you could get Castillo for gallon straight up in a trade right now after the 10 K I would do it. I would, I would easily do it. Yeah, I know. And both of people after like, I kind of like Ugh, about gallon. Everyone's like 10 Ks. It's the Rockies. That's equivalent to five strikeouts on other teams. And imagine if there were good hitters, he would give up more runs. Like watch gallon. He doesn't look right. It, he was, I appreciate him completely knowing what he didn't have and being like, I'm going to throw a bunch of curveballs and stuff. I don't know how long that's going to last. I think someone pointed out like Castillo kind of a slow starter that definitely might be intact. Watch the stuff if it ticks back up, but I still think the stuff is good. He had a 32% whiff rate on the fastball. Um, you know, the changeup maybe just needs to be a little bit more part of it. I'd like to see him playing around Luis Castillo a little bit, but there, there is something with the Mariners pitching staff. Watch Kirby tonight. All right. Uh, we'll keep an eye on all those guys because that uh, certainly does make a bit of a difference. Uh, I want to give away some free stuff to all I want to do listeners here. Uh, so here we go. Trophy smack. 36. But little, 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 little. I can't do a thing. But That's pretty good, though. There it is. Trophy smack championship trophy. It is being given away today. And the winner is Alexander Torres. Alexander, congrats. Get in touch with us at customer support. Mailbag at fantasypros.com. Again, mailbag at fantasypros.com with your mailing address. Proof of your subscription to the Fantasy Bros MLB YouTube channel. 
We'll get that shipped out to you right away. Again, Alex Torres, you're the big winner. Congratulations. And do you like free stuff, Welsh? Because I like free stuff. I We've love got a free new stuff. giveaway. Here we go. Am I eligible? Boom. No, you can't. Oh, I wish I was. Win. Look at that thing. Look at this. Jose Ramirez autographed jersey. All you got to do is drop your comments below on a video and be a subscriber to the Fancy Bros MLB. Yeah, YouTube channel. That's all you got to do. And you could win this Jose Ramirez autographed jersey. Two easy steps. That's it. Jose Ramirez can be yours. I mean, that's some good free stuff. I remember some Good. moron in one of the YouTube comments was like, they don't ever give away the things. They never give away. Yes, we do. We no, always no. give away the things. I know because I see the email that goes for the mailbag thing. So we always give away the stuff. So Alexander Torres, congratulations. And then you want to be like Alexander, be go subscribe. Let's get to 20K this season. That's our goal here at Fancy Pros MLB. Let's get it going. Let's talk about uh, some up and down from yesterday. Lane Thomas continues to get red hot. I know he's hot. He was on this list actually yesterday. Uh, but again, three for five with a homer, three ribbies. Love that. Mr. Alvarez in Houston, three for five, two homers. And Brandon Nimmo, four for four with not one, but two homers. Did you see that first ribbies. bomb, by the way? Yeah. I mean, just he just absolutely turned on it. Every time he starts getting going, by the way, I'm kind of like, dang it, why don't I have like more Brandon Nimmo shares? Nimmo, well, I mean, I feel like we talked about him. Like, I mean, how many mocks did we do where I took him? Because he's this yeah. guy that just floats around there and he gets on base, he's got some pop. You know, he's not going to steal. Maybe he'll steal 10 bases on the year, maybe if you get lucky. Like, But he's just a good baseball player. And it's funny because the boring good baseball players that are going to, you know, score 85, 90 runs and, you know, give you, you know, decent stats across the board. They kind of fall through the cracks sometimes in ADP because everyone gets so excited about the what if guys. And they get really sour about, you know, some of the guys who have injuries or older players. And the guys like Brandon Nimmo just kind of fall through the cracks. And he was a perfect example in the outfield of a great late value pick. And not because of yesterday, just because. But yesterday is certainly a good reminder. Well, of that it. offense has really suffered uh, early on. And they're starting to pick it back up. Lindor's starting to pick it back up. Nimmo, I think, is a really important piece to it. So Mets starting to kind of roll back into it. All right. Let's continue on here with the downs. Because when there's up, there's downs. You Darvish, three innings, four runs against the Cubbies. Boo, don't care for that. Maybe it's just something about that Cub uniform that just you Darvish just was never a fan of. I don't know. Uh, Jesus Lazardo, talk about Jekyll and Hyde. Seven runs, four and two thirds, lost to the Yankees. Not a good audition if the Yankees are the ones who uh, might be uh, vying for your services at one point sooner than later. But again, not the best start there for Lazardo. And then Andrew Heaney was shelled for six runs, three and two third uh, yesterday against the Astros. Any of these downs stand out to you? Um, I mean, as far as like the Lizardo one is interesting, I'm going to probably start the clock at some point here of like, when is the last start for Lizardo going to happen? Or when do they just get out of this? Because that team is going to, they have to sell it off. They're, they're embarrassing. The Marlins are, I think, what are they, one in 11, one in 10 right now? I mean, it's a disaster pile. And there are teams that should probably be a little bit more aggressive in trying to get try to get starting pitching and what's really available now. You know, Bieber was probably one of the prime mid-year guys mm -hmm. that would have been traded. It's Lazardo. So I wonder if some team kind of moves in quicker, but you're going to want better performances from this. All these guys on this down by the way. I mean, I guess me outside of Heaney, but you know, the pitching side being down it's getting rough as we're getting into like second and third starts for this to continue to be down. Cause I was not a Lizardo guy. I was kind of fading, but I was a Darvish guy and the Darvish. Stuff I was an M fix. a Darvish guy. Like I'm still good about Darvish. So bad start. No. That's fine. You know, like it's April. I just want to remind it is April. It is April. No, 100%. Let's just relax. Angelo, by the way, how about a Tom Brady signed Expos Jersey? I love your heads at, I just actually got an Expos t-shirt i forgot where i bought it from but i was like oh, oh i got it. i saw it online because it's cool because i saw baseball in montreal in olympic stadium and it was one of the most amazing weekends of my life went to not one but two games we drove up there and they stopped us you know at the border and they said you know they asked you all the questions are you carrying any firearms or drugs and of course we were carrying like, all yes. of them and we said no uh but then they asked oh what it's your reason for visiting canada and we said we're here to see the expos and the guy border patrol laughed out loud at us he's like pull and over we're gonna check the car like, these guys have it. he's like yeah. no really i said no we're here to see the expos he went okay <laughs> he just let us through <laughs> it was 
awesome. And then we did bring uh, some Cuban cigars back. So we did smuggle some things. Oh. Shh, border control, don't come for me. Uh, all right, so those are the ups and downs. Let's talk about injuries. Uh, Justin Foscu, 10-day IL with the oblique strain. Trevor Story, bone structure in his dislocated uh, shoulder seems to be concerning to Alex Cora. So it's concerning to Cora. Concerning oh, he's going to gonna be out for the majority of the season at this point. It's brutal. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, I think we have to ask ourselves, is Story just done? Like, um, I think is the story is, over. Is the, is the, yeah. Well, I mean, Cody Rhodes finished the story, but is Trevor's story also done? That might be. I, I He seems uh, pretty bullish and that's never going to happen. He's going to keep going. But I, I legit think they were talking like they're hopeful. He was in tears, I guess, and uh, hopeful of coming back this season. But he's a cut in fantasy. You move on. You can IL it. I, I legit am at the point, too, where I, su- I feel like I suggest going to the IL less because we're all just just filling it up with pitching at this point. So like put them on the IL. If your uh, roster gets too full and you, your IL gets too full, you can dump him. I don't know if he'll be back at all this season. And it'll be really interesting to see if Rafaela ends up filling some of that middle infield spot. And, you know, maybe will your Abreu is going to get an opportunity. Well, I was going to so. ask you, is Rafaela the big winner here? I feel like he is. Cause I feel like now it's like, he's got all the rope in the world. Like, yeah, there, well, there's nothing to me that like, no matter if he struggles, if he doesn't, whatever happens the rest of the month, like it, it's yours kid. Like, yeah, I think Rafaela is locked. Uh, it'll be interesting to see like Von Grissom, uh, you know, him coming up a Bray. We're just going to have to see. I think they might just put a bunch of different pieces in there, but Rafaela probably the biggest winner. If there were any questions, if he was going to stick around because middle and outfield, I got nothing for Von Grissom. Uh, watch them play. I, I just, I don't see it. I don't, I don't see it. I don't know why. Maybe, you know, and, and it's funny because I remember when it was Drew Waters and it was Pache and it was a couple of the other Braves guys, the Braves has done a really good job of, you know, nobody's better than the Braves, like in terms of the Albies and the Ronald Cunhas and all the, like they, they, know, they have the evaluation of talent, but whenever the Braves, you know, because that system is so good, other prospects in that system tend to get overrated. And whenever the Braves dump somebody, that should be like, check, please. Like, you should be out on them because the Braves' town evaluation is always good. Like, when they made that pivot away from Freeman and signed Matt Olson, I was like, what a genius move that was. Yeah, that. I mean, it just – because, you know, on three years from now, that will be a better move. Like, that's the thing. It's like Freddie Freeman, older player. Like, now he's still great. Not knocking Freddie Freeman. Love Freddie Freeman. But, like, that was a very savvy business move by the Braves. So, you got to hand it to them. All right, more injuries, more concern. Now, I wasn't around the weekend to talk about the whole Tommy John stuff going on. <clears throat> Framber Valdez scratched from his start Monday. Sordas in the elbow. Nick Pavetta on the IL with the flexor strain. The that Spencer one's Strider, new. Ugh. That one is new, and I know you've got shares of Pavetta. Now, I have some thoughts and feelings, as I am one to do. My thoughts and feelings really stem from facts, which are a few years ago, and he was on MLB Network. I saw him on MLB Network, and I said, hey, would you come on with me and do a show? And he said, yes. Who? I had Tommy John, oh, Tommy John. Uh, uh, Jr., uh, Tommy John's son, who was a pitcher at one point as well, who is a youth sports medicine doctor now. And it was a fascinating interview. And he basically told me, he said, look, the way of youth, the, the culture of youth baseball and travel baseball and international baseball, where these kids are just doing the one thing over and over and over again at 12, 13, 14, 15 years old, He said, this is critical moments for these kids where, you know, because the body is not meant to do that at that age, they're not growing properly. Their elbow ligaments and things like that, they're getting taxed at a much higher rate than they should be because it's Johnny's got to throw a million innings over and whatever. And it's not just in the domestic here, it's international leagues too. And, And it's obviously going on where in these academies where you have these young kids trying to you know, do everything they can to make it major league baseball. And it's the max velo. It's all these things. And he kept saying, I've got kids coming to my office on a daily basis who have the elbows of 40 and 50 year old men and the knees of 40 and 50 year old men, because they are doing travel ball 365. They're playing the same sports over and over again. And he's like, and this is the epidemic. So I understand the people talking about the pitch clock, which I think is complete nonsense personally, because if you watch a game from the seventies and eighties, God, these guys work so fast. They got the goal. They go right back to pitching. Yeah, they throw like like 81 though too. They do, but it was the art of pitching. It was about location. It was about changing. But that's not what it is now. I don't need to be argumentative. No, no, I like being argued. I'm Italian. I live to argue. 
but the, I, the the spider tech stuff and and the better grip on the ball, especially the newer baseballs, Welsh. Yeah. I do think the newer baseballs have hurt pitchers. There was an epidemic. I want to say it was thirteen or fourteen to start the season. I remember I was on Sirius with Dan Strafford, friend of ours, and they were. We, we couldn't believe it. Every time we were on the air for like the first couple of weeks, it was these five guys having Tommy John. And I remember we had like uh, the specialist come on and talk to us at that point. This is not new. It's not changing. But what is different is, like you said, the max velocity. The guys were throwing 85. You know, 90 was a big deal back then. But they knew how to pitch. They knew how to get movement, like location. The art of pitching was different. And also like the max velo stuff that you go over and over again. And the fact that these guys, these kids at the ages, they're doing it by the time they get to 22, 23, 25 years old, they are not built for this. They're going to explode into the elbow. And that is what's going on here. And that's what's been going on for quite some time. So that's, again, it's not my take on it. These are facts from a sports medicine youth doctor. Now I, I don't know what you said about Strider or Yuri Perez or all the stuff yesterday but i want to hear what you said yesterday because i'm curious about what you think about those facts and what you think might be other things that are moving things in such a negative place when it comes to pitching yeah i mean I, i'm not people probably know this about me at this point i'm not kind of a like black and white guy like it's this and it's this so it's probably not too much of a surprise i don't think it is one everybody made quick the issue the pitch clock and the, i think it is a set of ingredients that have been put together to create an explosive Tommy John epidemic. So I think it is all those things. I think the spider tack might be one of the biggest. I think max effort in every element, the celebration of it. I, I haven't been thinking about this. There might be a point where we look back on the fire flaming 100 mile an hour thrower at pitch 85, like we do about that uh, ESPN segment of like, he got you know jacked up, like big hits in the NFL. We'll look at yeah. like that because mm -hmm. of the injuries. I just think it is the combo of all the things. So anytime if we get if we get pushed into a focus on this is this one thing is the only reason, I just don't think so. I think you put all those things together and kablooey, and that's where it's at right now. And I think that's that is the, the, that's I think the, the biggest problem. Term, by the way, kablooey. I think, is the term for I think the biggest problem with that is it's also because there are multiple different factors. It's going to create a never ending solution because people will never focus on multiple factors. They'll only focus on one thing. The big topic of discussion will be the pitch clock. It won't be the training centers that share videos and MLB sharing videos of guys throwing 102 or running max effort stuff. So I don't know how we'll find the answer when I think all of them are contributing to it. Um, the best solution would probably be spider tack. And fixing that because then you have less pressure being put on the ball, better grip. So that strains the muscles less. But guess what? The least likely of all of them, because then baseball would have to admit it made a mistake and that will never happen. They will never backtrack on something that they took out. There is zero. Well, chance, they, you so can't change know. the ball so much over the years. And uh, I mean, it's a slicker ball there. Everybody knows this who pitches like they'll all tell you that. But the combination of the slicker ball and not having the spider tack, forget the pitch. This whole pitch clock thing is, I'm telling you, it's a red herring. It's nonsense. It is the biggest nonsense out there. It is also more the, again, the culture of it, the max velo. You don't get noticed if you're not throwing 90 something, no matter how good your stats are in high school. All that nonsense, all that noise is going to get to a point where I feel like Welsh, that, you know, wait, running backs are you know, now like suppressed in the NFL financially because like, well, we got to burn them and churn them. Like that could be where starting pitching. Oh, 100%. The, the six man That's rotation is going to be a lot bigger into the future. And, you know, one of the funny things too, I was thinking about is, is it, I don't think it's in the KBO. I think it's in like one of the Japanese baseball leagues, but I think they pre spider tack the ball. And that's probably going to be the solution that baseball goes through. But then again, it's going to be like a, a, a ridiculous process where they're going to keep sending out these stupid balls that these players are like, what the hell is this? And it's an unperfect science. It's pretty bad. It's going to take pitchers, unfortunately, probably established pitchers, you know, taking their turn to change it and not focus on max velo and focus on, you know, other pitch types and command and stuff like that. It's just something we're going to be dealing with for years and years now. And I think it yeah. bodes to a bigger question, which we don't have time for, which we talked a little bit about yesterday is what do you do and how do you pivot in fantasy? Oh, wow. Do you it's either hold on as tight as you can? Do you, no. what, do you hold on as Ooh. tight as you can to what you have? Or do you just freely just whatever? Blah, 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 Why do you think I one? didn't take a picture for the first three rounds of any mock we ever did? 
this year. Yeah. Like, I mean, this is, this is what I've started to do and this just continues to drive it home. And it's not that Strider isn't theoretically valuable enough to be a first round pick. He absolutely is because he's so much better than everybody else. But again, it's like, what does that investment cost you if it goes wrong? And the chances of it going wrong are so much higher than the position player. But does that mean you're going to sell off your pitchers now? Is that what like Not you're sell looking off, to do? But I'm going to buy them at a value and I'm going to continue to look for the guys at a value. And you know what else I'm going to do too? I'm going to continue to look for something that I, again, I keep coming back to it. Certain builds and certain players too. Like, you know, the, the pitchers who have the bigger, lower halves that are more the drop and drive old school Tom Seaver looking kind of like pitcher. Strider? Well, Strider's that the to me does not that guy. Skeens is more that guy. You'll get him physically. Skeens is lower half, much different than Spencer Strider. Uh, Strider Spencer Strider's like Quadzilla. He might be Quadzilla, but in terms of like the size of like he's also not the he's not like a Tyler Glass now size pitcher. I feel like you're you doing I mean? like, the uh what God, what was the former uh he was just on the Chicago White, White Sox TV, the former man Ozzy Gann. Ozzy Gann was like, you know what doesn't strain? Fat. And you just need a bunch of he fat won. pitchers. Get but rid you know of the pitch clock and let the fatties be out throwing. <laughs> you know what? Like I don't know, that. man. Like, he ain't wrong. And I'm not saying you got to go that far either. But there's definitely – you can't have the best science. You can't have the best training methods. You can't have the best analysis and have the worst rate of health. Something is off here, and it's been off for a long time. And it's time for them to figure it out. I mean, it's just, you know, it's – again, the it's art of pitching burgers. doesn't exist anymore. And, and that's something we got to get to. But you know what else is here? Luckily, the art of wagering. And well, should I have that for you with, of course, today, Tuesday, the best bets of the day. Thanks for waking up, Welsh. That's right. Welsh and I are taking through the best bets of the day. I hope that went better uh, yesterday with Bogman. I don't know if you guys really or you. And just I, I did. It. I set him up for it. I, I kind of zoned out there for a second. I was thinking yeah, about wow. the fat guys and the burgers and the pitching that, and that don't strain there you go <laughs> all right so let's talk about the uh, favorite one on the board five and a half k's over plus 104 did the social video about it today for cole reagan's look struck out seven guys struck out nine guys five and a half is absurd here's how i do it i look i figure out what in my head what it should be it should have been somewhere around seven and a half it was five and a half so bet this one bet it hard if you want to bet it up to six and a half you can alt line it but i'll just take the easy money at the plus money and just put more units on it and be safer. So I'm not going to be greedy today. Cincinnati, uh, Frankie Montas on the mound today. He's been terrific so far for the Reds. Give me Cincinnati and an Ellie De La Cruz bat that's been so hot. Minus one and a half, plus 136 against Milwaukee. They are at home in Cincy. I like this one. Uh, New York Yankees, Carlos Rodon on the mound. Doesn't make me feel warm and fuzzy, but AJ Puck on the other side and the Marlins do. So give me the Yankees minus one and a half at plus 112. If you want to have some fun with that Cole Reagans, uh number today with the over on the k's the parlay of the day for joey p is this uh dodgers money line phillies money line cole reagan's over five and a half at plus 104 you can get that up to plus four six two you got wheeler on the mound for the phillies today i love that one so those are my best bets of the day for tuesday in major league baseball welsh what do you have for the people yeah i'm down with some of that stuff by the way our bet of the day just got absolutely trounced by the diamondbacks they screwed it we hit the one and a halfs on everything else and diamondbacks were just brutal yesterday but uh, my bets of the day. We uh, you mentioned Philly. You like Philly? I want to love the Cole Reagans one. I want to be with you on it. It's just the Astros strike out like bottom three or four in the league. So I I just couldn't pull the trigger. But I really wanted to hit a strikeout prop today. My favorite Zach Wheeler six and a half minus one twenty five. I think it's a great matchup. Uh, Cardinals are striking out literally. Every, like top five, six in the league, every single game. It's nine, 10 a game. Uh, we've seen Wheeler rattle off some big strikeout numbers already. I think it was 10 in Cincinnati. So I really, really like this number. I like him to be able to move through the lineup. I will also tell you as a tiny little aside, I was also looking at his under walk and it's minus 120 in a lot of minus 125 in a lot of spots at one and a half. Don't hate that one on Zach Wheeler as well. I might uh, hit that personally. You mentioned the Dodgers. You have the Dodgers money line. I can get down with that. I'm going to actually just take the spread at one and a half for the Dodgers. That's minus 115 over on bet 365. I like the Dodgers to keep this going. Louis Varlin giving up a decent amount of homers. Obviously can pull this back, but the Dodgers offense has just been going nuts. And I think they're going to get to Varlin a little bit today. So I like the one and a half. And I haven't done this. I don't know if I've done this all season long, but I just really fell in love with this. This one's going down relatively soon. Adley Rutschman total bases one and a half, even money plus 100. I found that 
And I like this matchup against Bayo. Uh, he's going to be able to switch over hitting lefty. Bayo gives up like a 270 average against lefties right now, half decent OPS. So I like Adley Rutschman, who I believe in all but one of his games where he's had a hit has reached this two total base marker. I like uh, the total base for some plus money. Those are my bets, my best bets of the day, my friends. There you have it, everybody. And don't forget, when you make those bets, do it with Bet365. Bet five bucks, get 150 in bonus bets when you use that promo code leading off. It's time to look at the home runs, everybody. And uh, somebody's at the top of the board. I don't oh, want to say God. who, but it is me. That's right, with seven. I love people like, you don't get the soda home run yesterday just because you were off doesn't mean it was a weekend call. That's fine. Uh, that's fine. Whatever you want to do. But I am the heel. I am the final boss. So if you want that Vlad oh. Guerrero signed bat, you got to go through me, Joey P, to get it. And, of course, the way you do that is to join our Discord, fantasybros.com slash chat. I don't want to see Christian Yelich's face today. I want to see – there we go. Who is that good-looking guy, Welsh? Who is that stud right there for the Guy with no trip? homers. Uh, <laughs> fair enough. But, again, join our Discord, fantasybros.com slash chat. Again, tomorrow we'll be doing cleaning up live after the show on Discord. So the perfect time to join – Again, uh, Welsh, in terms of the home run calls for today, I'm going to stay with Juan Soto because I'm a heel mm. and I'm a jerk. So I'm picking Juan Soto again today against the uh, Marlins. I'm expecting some middle relief sooner than later uh, for that game. But your thoughts on your home run call of the day, Welsh? What do you have? Uh, who cares what the hell I have to say? Well, worst home run call of all time. I am going to get to the point where here's what I'm going to start doing. If, if I don't get a home run the rest of this week, I'm telling you, this is what I'm doing next week. I'm going to make a wheel and I'm just going to like accept <laughs> names and I'm going to spin the wheel every single show. And we'll just start guessing because I am bad at this. I wanted to take, by the way, your Yankee game. I kind of wanted to take um, uh, judge in this one because it's a righty versus a lefty, but judge hasn't really been good against lefties. So I don't like the soda one as much, but he'll probably hit two. So I have for the last couple of days just been trying to go to chalk plays and I keep going in the wrong space. My chalk play of the day, I thought about Freddie Freeman. I thought about Shohei Otani. I'm going to Mookie Betts. Give me one extra at bat. Louis Varlin averaging over two homers given up per game right now. I'm hoping Mookie Betts gets to him. And I'm telling you right now, Otani probably will because I talked myself off of it because he's hitting too many homers right now. Mookie Betts is my home run call of the day. Please let me get on the board. I got to get, get Joey. I want to pull the undertaker. I want you to be standing there and I'll just. Oh, and then I turn around there. and there's Welsh just staring at me in the yeah. face. His uh, face Razor Ramon like, wants to know. Joe doesn't get the bat though if he wins, right? Oh, we've already I, discussed this. Joe gets the bat and he's going to break it live on camera and make you all mad. <laughs> <laughs> I did this and a bunch of fun codes just fell. Oh, that's bad luck. House. That's right. That's right, everybody. No, I, I, I am not eligible to win. But would you give it to it, somebody? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I would I, honestly knowing what I would do. Probably I would probably do like a charity bid thing with the peanuts and cracker jacks and whoever bid the most for like St. Jude's. That's what I would do. Oh, See, nice. now everybody wants to root for me because I'm doing something nice. I oh, would keep it and put no, it in my back area and not do any of that. I know you're worse than me. See, everyone thinks I'm the heel, but deep down, I'm the nice guy. Oh, deep Welsh down, is the I real the heel, heel yeah. around these parts. And we'll both be back tomorrow to do this all again. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to Fantasy Bros MLB so you can win the newest giveaway again. It's a Jose Ramirez autographed Guardians jersey, yeah. courtesy of us. That's right. Drop your comments below. Subscribe to the channel. That's all you got to do. And don't forget, the other good thing to do is... Get my playbook MLB right now. Download that bad boy or go to fansbros.com slash MLB my playbook. Sync your leagues for free, all of them, and help us help you win more championships in fantasy baseball. Welsh, fun time today. What is it? You have one thing before yeah. we go? Well, I just want to remind everybody, no. coming up on Wednesday, if you guys want more leading off action, it's Joey and myself for cleaning up. So make sure mm -hmm. you guys are in the discord, go over to fantasypros.com slash cleaning up and you can RSVP, I believe right now to make sure you're in the room, uh, be live with us, ask us questions in the chat or talk with us. Just make sure you're a part of it. <laughs> Maniana on Wednesday. By the way, I already subscribe and I comment. So technically I guess I could win this belt. So, or the, what if you just won all of the yeah. stuff?
and just held it. <laughs> I want to wear the Ramirez jersey and break the belt at the same time, and then light the jersey on fire. Just complete chaos. That's what I'm gonna uh, get. put barbed wire around the Jose uh, Ramirez. Yeah, there you go, everybody. Fun times. Good to be back. Good to see you all, and of course the Welsh. That'll do it for us. But the story of the game goes on for the Welsh. I'm Joey P. We'll see you next time, kids. Bye bye.